Okay, now let's return to our main text, Revelation 3. Verse 15, I know thy works. Now you'll notice that all over Revelation 2 and 3. You see that? Works, works, works. So the idea is this. The idea is you don't have to worry about Christians don't have to about, uh, Christians don't have to worry about losing their salvation because all of this has to do with your works, not your salvation. Now, salvation is it by faith or works? Faith, right? And faith does not equal works, right? Right. So because these are not the same, don't combine these two together. Divide them. Right. See? So all these are dependent upon your works, not upon your faith, not your salvation by faith. That will be very helpful for you to remember. So when you read Revelation 2 and 3, consider it from a standpoint of works, not salvation. If you're going to look at a standpoint of salvation, then you know who it's going to apply to. It's going to be tribulation saints. That's a doctrinal tribulation application, not to Christians. Okay, let's keep reading right here. I know thy works. Yeah, God knows your works. All right? You live in Laodicea. He knows what you're doing. That thou art neither cold nor hot. Okay, so you're not cold in your works. Remember, Sardis was known as cold, right? It was dead. But they weren't hot either. Who was hot? Philadelphia, remember? What is Laodicea? They're not cold, dead. They're not hot. They're lukewarm. They're in between. So let's be honest. During the days of Sardis where it was Reformation days or pre-Reformation days, they weren't as evangelistic as we are today, especially where we're trying to reach people online now and doing street preaching and track passing, right? So we weren't dead like them that time. At least we have some life in us. But we're not hot like Philadelphia either, where we get, gladly gave up our lives on the mission field to reach all kinds of foreigners out there. Great Awakening Revival preaching. We're in between lukewarm. Now here's the thing. Some independent fundamental Baptist preachers, they act like all uh, smarty mouth and they criticize Bible believers saying, they say that we're in the worst day and age. No, look at Sardis. It was worse than them. Look at Thyatira and other places. They were worse than Laodicea. Well, look right here. The Bible already said that we aren't cold. We're lukewarm. So yeah, we admit that these days, they were much colder than us. That doesn't mean that we're better than them though. You might say, why? Look what God's opinion is. Look at God's opinion. I would thou wert cold or hot, verse 15. See, God wants you to either be cold or hot. You're serious like the pre-Reformation? Yeah, God would prefer. You might say, why? Because, keep reading. Verse 16, so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Look at that. So God says, because you're lukewarm, you're in between, I'm going to throw, spew is like throwing up. I'm going to throw you up out of my mouth. Drink cold, uh, if I'm going to drink cold coffee, I'm going to drink cold iced coffee. If I'm going to drink hot coffee, I'm going to drink hot coffee. You give me lukewarm coffee, bleh. That's the idea right here. That's the idea. See, God would prefer cold or hot. For his taste, not lukewarm. Amen. You might say, why? Why? I don't understand. Simple, because God is your in or your out. He's right. that right. mentality. Right there, right there. It's like having a person in church who's lukewarm, not cold or hot. Look, if you're a cold, dead member, I want you cold and dead and don't bother us again. Get out. All right? If you're a hot member, I want you to stay hot, keep the church going. But if we have lukewarm Christians here, do you know how much of a grief that is to the person sitting next to you, to the pastor, and to the whole church ministry? Because it's like the pastor or the member can't depend upon you if you will be there to help out in a certain thing in the church. Because they can't tell if you're cold or you're hot. If you're cold, then they know, I'm not going to ask you. If you're hot, then they know, I'm going to ask you. If you're lukewarm, they're like, I'm going to ask you. But I have to keep following up with you and then seeing if you're going to faithfully do it. Luke, warm, that's today. 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 And you know I'm right because I'm, point, I'm looking at you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Now, when I say that, I look a lot of times at myself, too, when I say you. So you got to realize this is that this is today's day and age, and God hates this day and age the, the most because we're in and out, in and out. He don't like that. I mean, think about it. Well, how did Joel Osteen become a powerful church? Because it's not a cold church, and it's not a hot church. It's lukewarm. Uh -huh. You got people who genuinely love Jesus. I'm serious. Yeah. You got people at Joel Osteen's church who genuinely love Jesus, people who want to worship God, people who want to serve Him, but you got people in there who are just fleshy and carnal and they can't leave the world. So they're that passage that Jesus warned that you have two masters. You will love the one or hate the other. You can't serve God and mammon. That's Joel Osteen's church. They love Jesus while they cling on to the world. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I talking about you? All right, I can preach here for two hours, but let's keep going right here. Verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich. Doesn't that, okay, pay attention to the verse 17. This is you. This is you. Because thou sayest, I am rich. See, you think that you got all the money that you need and increased with goods, right? You have so many goods in your life that keeps growing more and more. It's not enough. You have to go to Amazon to buy more. And have need of nothing. See, you don't need anything. That's why you don't need church to comfort you. Why? Because life is good with you at home. And that's why you only come to church when things bad happen to you. So you can have brother, sister, so-and-so preach or say something to comfort you. You notice why poor people get saved more often in visitation and street preaching today? You notice why minorities are the ones who are coming to church more often today than a lot of white Americans, which is sad? Do you know why? Because we have everything. And it's the ones who are poor, the ones who are minorities struggling to make ends meet. They need that church sort of gathering there. They need to hear some preaching. They need, because they need some kind of comfort they can rely upon. That's why you have a hard time re reaching rich people today. How about that? How about that? Compare a country life with the city life. Who do you think uh, are the people who lean more toward the Bible? Why? Because city, you got everything. All right. Let's keep reading because I'm talking about you right here. All right. Verse 17, have need of nothing. Yeah, no kidding. You don't need the Bible. You don't need prayer time because you got your TV. You got your internet. You got your stupid uh, whatever. You know, you got your friends. You got your drink. But if God took all those things away, we're going to see you come to church Sunday crying and bawling. I want you to reflect your life. When's the last, wasn't there a time in your life that you were so carried away with everything in your school, everything in your work, everything in your family, and then when God started to discipline you and take away those things that you start to come back yep. to church? Yep. Thank you, Lord. And knowest not, you don't know that thou art what? Wretched. You're wretched and miserable. Yeah, you're miserable. And you're poor. So you have nothing. And blind, you can't see, and you're naked. Now, isn't that a contrast with Revelation 2 when we read Smyrna? Look at chapter 2, verse 9, huh? About Smyrna. Remember Smyrna? They were under the Roman persecution. They weren't spoiled, rotten Americans. They were running for the hills, running for their lives. They were under severe ten persecutions of the Roman emperor. Remember that? Now look at this, verse 9, I know thy works and tribulation and what? Poverty. But despite of their poverty, what does the Bible say? But thou art what? Rich. Rich. What's going on? What did he mean that you're rich and you have everything, but you don't know you're poor, blind, and naked? Very simple. Do you believe in the nature of the flesh and the spirit? That's the answer here. So what's going on right here, I'm losing room. So what's going on right here, why was Smyrna poor, but they were rich? They were poor in the flesh, but they were wealthy in the spirit. This is spiritual, right? Spiritual rewards. But they're fleshy. They didn't have these fleshy things. As a matter of fact, these fleshy things, they lost it all for the sake of Jesus Christ. But let's take Laodicea here. In the flesh, don't you have this? 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 
But in the spiritual side, you lost this, you lost this, you lost this, you lost this, and you lost this. Satan's job is to make you so wealthy and comfortable in this American lifestyle that you become miserable and poor in the spirit. Did I get anyone under conviction right there? That's why we all want to get a nicer job. That's why we all want to get do well in school. That's the reason why we want to get a nicer home for our family. We want to marry the right guy, the right woman, and have a comfortable family lifestyle. Save up our money, 401k, etc., etc. Be careful what you're thinking about, which Paul warned you a long time ago. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this world. I'm planning out a great vacation trip, you know, stuff like that. Be careful right there. That's going to make you more poor right here. Now, look, I'm not getting down on you. We all, there's nothing wrong. The Bible says that God has given you richly all things on this earth to enjoy. Amen? So take opportunity to enjoy this world. But don't let this world rob your focus in the spiritual rewards. And that is what it's doing right now. I'm having such a great time kicking Laodicea, man. <laughs> I'm having such a great time, man. Okay, let's look. Amen. So because of that, look at, uh, so that's why it makes so much sense that at the millennium, people are going to be wondering, is there enough cities to rule? How is God going to do that? No problem, because God talked about you lay out the sands. There are plenty of you lay out the sands that God says, you're miserable, poor, blind, and naked. No problem for God to have a lot of cities for Christians to rule because that means then there's so many thousands to hundreds of thousands, if not millions, who are going to be poor, blind, naked. I love Jesus. I served him. I went to church. Yeah, you're not cold. You're lukewarm. But being lukewarm is enough to make you verse 17. Remember that. Did you pay attention to what I say? Being cold does not make you lose everything. It's lukewarm. Cold, yeah, you can lose everything when you're cold, obviously, but the same thing with being lukewarm. Oh, I went to church. I went to a Bible-believing church. Uh, I've done some things. I've done praying, Bible reading, etc. No, if you're lukewarm, not enough. You can be blind and naked. That's what the verse said, naked, naked. Okay, now uh, let's read verse 18, and then we'll wrap it up for today. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. So God's counseling them, advising them to buy from God gold tried in the fire. Remember the rewards right here? They're going to be tried in the fire. You should buy your gold from God. A lot of you aren't buying enough gold. Remember, the gold, silver, precious stones depend on your works. So you're not working enough where you buy from the master and earn gold for yourself. Instead, what you're doing is that you're working so hard to buy enough from the flesh where you can have enough gold uh, in your home. That's what you're doing. Tried in the fire, right? Remember, your, gold, your works are tried in the fire, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The fire test what kind of rewards you can get. Gold, silver, precious stones. That thou mayest be rich. Yeah, so you can be rich in the spirit. And white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. There is your clothes right here. White garments, depending how well you serve him. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. See that? A lot of people are going to be naked if they don't serve him well. And be ashamed. And look at this part. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve. Eye salve is some medicine for your eyes. Why should you anoint it? That thou mayest what? See. So what's going on is, as mentioned at verse uh, 17, they're blind, right? So a lot of you are blind right now, and you need to put that eye salve, that medicine on your eyes so you can see a little more clearly. You know why? When you see too much of 401k, job, school, family, wife, husband, children, you blinded your eyes. All you saw was fleshy things, and you blinded your eyes because you did not see heaven. You did not see gold, silver, precious stones. You forgot what Jesus looked like. You forgot what the preaching you've heard, the fire you felt. You lost all that sight. You blinded yourself. 
Why? Because you saw too much of this stupid screen going like two seconds, like every two seconds. You blinded yourself. So you need to see. What's very interesting about this is that you'll notice that verse 17, it says, you are wretched, right? If you look at Romans chapter 7, Paul calls himself wretched. So in other words, a saved Christian, you might be saved and holy, but he's still a wretched person. Why is that? So this is a good verse for eternal security, that means. That means no matter how wicked or wretched you are as a sinner, you're still saved. You're eternally secured. You might say, how so? Because how so is that Paul says that he's a wretched person at Romans chapter 7. Why? Because in the flesh, he's wretched. He's wicked and sinful. But in the spirit, what? He's eternally secured. It's holy and righteous. See that division. There's that division right there. And that's what you see in Laodicea. Laodicea in their works, right? Not salvation here, but works. What are they? They're in the fleshy side. They're in the fleshy side. So remember that. That would be a great verse. If you look up the word wretched, that means really wicked person. But you'll notice that they're still saved Christians, and you can use Romans chapter 7 with Paul. He says he's a wretched person. Why? Because it's referring to the fleshy side. So no matter how wicked you live your life, you've got to realize this. It doesn't affect your spiritual nature, your salvation. It's secured. It's sealed. It's separated from the fleshy side. That's why your flesh is such a wicked sinner that it's going to rot in the ground and die. But your spiritual side, where, where your soul resides, it's going to go to heaven. Makes sense, right? All right, let's continually kick Laodicea next week.